It has been a wild week. As we speak right now, live on a Tuesday night, as we speak, Chat GPT is losing its Tootsie Fruitsie. Like apocalyptically? No, just like completely hilariously. Okay. Um it's 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 flipped it's it's because I didn't beat one. cancer for Skynet to rise. <laughs> Um, I've got some examples over here. Put them on screen. Um, we they don't know why OpenAI is aware of it and they're they're messing with the buttons. But uh let's see over here. Um for what one, one, it just kept going off in Spanglish. And they can't make it stop. Um one of them is doing some corporate speak. Suggested agenda, coinage of the meeting and docket conflux, lift off together and vindicate the things as to be seen centermost for the meet. Develop goosing and walk mark rack, ghost line the flux and trick from the first telling till now. Be thankful for the outfetch and needlework on the eaves of the Novial Pith. Hitches and hefts reproof. Uh, Ethel the books, any concrete scaries and the sny of hitches with a primal house on the list for the layoff and gavel vaulting. Forsaking and tough fire lining. Grapnel and any in one sleeve lids. End day tilters and off the book for gadding or grid scale into the working. It's gone manners. Honestly, that just sounds like James Joyce to me. I just asked it to assist with some math and it's by, it's a step, it's a lot, it's a fold, it's a draw, it's a pass, it's a win, it's the mix, it's the match, it's the meter, it's the method, it's the step, it's the stand, it's the stay, it's the system, it's the shift, it's the shape, it's the set, it's the sort, it's a sum, it's a round, it's a range, it's a rate, it's the main, it's the mark, it's the mean, it's the mode, it's the order. It's just, it's fucked up. That's like math by Lynn manuel Miranda. <laughs> That's his next musical right there. So yeah, I'm having a grand time watching this thing lose its shit. So okay, I'm gonna sound like a little like old lady Dean Han. Yeah. How do you chat GPT? Not that I want to, because I don't, because I don't yeah. with AI. But like, is there a website yeah. that you go to? Yeah. And just ask it. Nice. Yeah. Why? Like, like I, you, you ask me why, and I'm like, like, why are people doing this? I don't know. Might give up, but I do have something to make us all laugh like hell this week. Okay. And I shouldn't be happy about it. It's terrible. And yet it's also hilarious. I can't stop laughing ever since I found the story. It just, oh, anyway. But we have other stories as well. Um, <laughs> we're going to start with the Valentine's Day stuff, of course. Let's get the intro rolling. Yeah. Here we go. I said, here we go. Let's do it. Go. Each week, Catherine, the radio that our audience go on the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff. Bring back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And yes, we've got not one, but two Valentine's Day stories this, this week. The first one is just, honey, you can do, I think you finally realized you can do better. I'm kind of confused why you were there in the first place. But here we go. I have, I, I, you know what, this year, actually, I kind of struggled to find a gift for Sarah because we had problems. Um, she didn't drink anymore. That's fine. But the cats are also insane now. Grady was not insane. Lumi and Charlie are insane. And that means we can't put any flowers near them. Mm. So I could get, I, I, I had been getting, you know, Sarah Valentine's get a nice bouquet. And now, and last year, we're like, we didn't think about it. And Lumi was all, I had to put her flowers on top of the refrigerator. You know what I just found out they make? They make 
Lego bouquets that light up from the inside. Okay, don't tell. So the flowers like okay. glow. Don't, 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 don't I, I might have to remember that for next year. So, um, anyway, so you get a gift. You do a nice thing. It's this. However, part of getting a gift is actually buying a gift, and not oh I don't know. Stealing shit from someone else's lawn. This is so ratchet. It's I'm I do kids still say that? Well, I am because there's no other word for it. This is so fucking ratchet. Florida man gifts mortified ex-girlfriend stolen statues for Valentine's Day. Polk County man is spending Valentine's Day in jail after Sheriff Grady Judd said he not only stole statues out of a front yard, he gifted them to his ex-girlfriend. According to Judd, Anthony Lewis, 33, wanted Valentine's Day to be special for his lost love, and he believes Lewis may have been trying to make up with her. Judd states that Lewis was riding his bicycle when he stole two crane statues out of a woman's front yard. It gets worse. The statues were provided to the victim by her deceased husband <gasps> before he was deceased, of course, but they were very special to her and he rips them off, shared Judd. I like that they have to point that out. Like, don't worry, the ghost of the dead husband didn't leave these on the lawn. <laughs> no, no, he did it before he was dead. Thanks for that. So, yeah, and, and the, the, the mugshot. Look at the audacity of this mugshot, this guy here. Dude, she is never going to take you back with that facial hair. Just, just give up. Uh, detectives tracked the missing statues to Lewis's ex-girlfriend's house. Judd said when investigators explained the statues were stolen, the woman was mortified and cooperated with deputies. How would you fucking feel? Like you get the fucking cops at your door. Because of this gift, big air quotes around that one. And like, also, like, like I, I am a big believer that you don't have to do flowers and candy and stuff on Valentine's Day. Like, so. if there's something else that your person would like, do that, you know? Because I would always get Dan a Valentine's Day gift. He didn't really like sweets, you know, so I would find something else. Um, so unless she was really into cranes. And I assume they mean the bird. Yeah. Like, you know, I've gotten many a stuffed hippo for Valentine's Day. Fine. But unless, like, if that's, like, you know, because most white girls have an animal that is, like, our animal. And our house is full of that stuff from that animal. Mm. It's a thing. So maybe that's her animal. But otherwise, you just picked up some random shit. <laughs> and threw them in her yard. Like, there you go. Love me. Like you actually, this was the, this is the rare case where you actually would have been better off buying one of those stupid bath and body kits at CVS that nobody wants. Well, even, I mean, this was his ex, so I don't know if that would work out very well either. The statues were yeah, returned. Well, their also he has that facial hair, so it's not going to work out anyway. The statues were returned to the rightful owner and Lewis, who has 39 previous burglary and theft charges was arrested that could also be the problem 30 honey why were you with him 39 child come on now. in a row in a row <laughs> uh, but wait we have something even more appalling for valentine's day i spent valentine's day with a plumber and that's not a euphemism. My water heater was broken. Well, it was a great time. It it, it was probably less horrifying than uh, than this was. Oh my god! Relatives decry yeah. oh, Undertaker's no. Valentine's card sent to care home residents. Okay, this is a different because in Colorado, a a uh, undertaker just got arrested for having a 
woman's body and is hers for 10 years. That's different. A firm of funeral directors sent Valentine's Day cards to residents of a care home in what has been described as a, quote, appalling stunt that the undertakers admitted was, quote, misjudged. So this was not a mistake. No. The card This sent, was on purpose. The cards sent to White Gates Care Center in Surrey were decorated with a red heart and a pink bow and bore the words, quote, sent with love. From T.H. Sanders and Sons. You did, you did this on purpose. They did this on purpose. Thinking of you. <laughs> like, I was, I was annoyed <laughs> when, uh, for my, my 40th birthday, I got in the mail a coupon for an anti-aging facial and a mammogram. And I was like, well, there it is. It's all over. That was annoying, but I got it. This is horrifying. Yeah. See you real soon. <laughs> the fuck? Jesus. Exactly. Oh, but wait, but wait. Defending distribution of the cards to residents on Friday, the care home said, we're deeply embedded with the local community and we value the support and engagement of all our neighbors, including T.H. Sanders. Out of their own kindness and goodwill, they have brought warmth, joy, and generosity to residents through various initiatives. No. No, it's advertising. It's it's yeah. advertising. And listen, I got to tell you, like, if you're in the funeral business, you need to be so fucking on point with your advertising. Mm -hmm. Like, you need to have the most socially aware, adept person oh. on the planet doing your advertising, social media, whatever. And I know you're a business, you need to advertise, but you need to be so careful. Because you do one little fuck up with that. One little slip up. No one's going to forget it. And when the time comes... Because you are dealing with something incredibly sensitive. And when the time comes and someone does need an undertaker, they're going to be like, not them. They're fuck ups. Right. They're gross They're going to remember you. Yeah. And they're going to remember that you're a piece of shit. I just, I love how the... And that's not the memory you want to leave. I love how the, the, the nursing home is like, no, they're doing it out of the goodness of their heart. No, they're not. They're ambulance chasing in a weird way. They're hearse chasing. They're hearse chasing. It's just, it's gross. It's gross. Yeah. Uh. All right, let's get to our regular nonsense. Um, you know, and, and they even mentioned the damn show in this article, which is not anything like the damn show. Breaking Bad has given people the wrong impression of drug dealers in that they are smart, cunning, careful, calculating, and, and capable. I mean, I'm sure some of them are. Maybe. But as we've seen here over and over again, not always. Yeah. For example, if you have a highly illegal meth lab on your property and you get burglarized, do not call the no. fucking police. Really? Come on now. 
New York man inadvertently called the cops on himself when he reported a burglary at the location where he was running a secret meth lab that authorities compared to the iconic show Breaking Bad, which is not, the, the meth lab wasn't in the it was it was in an RV, and then it was under. To be laundry. fair, until like episode four or five, it was in a basement. Well, yeah, but that was yeah, that was that was Jesse's. But they dispatched yeah. with the basement very quickly. Yeah, because there was a dead guy and they ruined the bathtub. Yeah. So, anyway. Yeah. Everyone has watched that show too many times. Um, Matthew Lashinsky, twenty three, twenty three. A farming... That's a rough 23, bro. Uh, Look at this guy. Yeah. Uh, far... I know we don't like to bag on people's looks, but. Mm. Now, Farmingville on New York's Long Island pleaded guilty. Long Island? Long Island pleaded guilty to unlawful manufacture of methamphetamine and other related charges. Authorities say on June 7, 2023, at about 3.30, Lashinsky called 911 to report a burglary in his purported business. Quantitative Laboratories, LLC. When Suffolk County police officers arrived at the scene, they found broken glass in the building's entrance. The officers also discovered what appeared to be a clandestine lab that was used to make methamphetamine and a hallucinogenic called dimethyltryptamine. I think I actually said that right. Or DMT. The defendant was operating a Breaking Bad style drug lab and tried to conceal it under the guise of legitimate business. He then inadvertently turned himself in when he reported a burglary occurred at the same business. Officers ultimately found more than 100 items of lab equipment, as well as chemical reagents and solvents to produce and manufacture meth. Police also recovered $40,000 in cash, an undisclosed amount of ecstasy, over three ounces of methamphetamine, and over 625 milligrams of pure ketamine. Also, two dozen 55-gallon drugs drugs containing a drug called GHB, also known as the date rape drug. Two dozen 55-gallon drums of roofies. 55-gallon drug. Two, two. So that's 110 gallons. Two dozen. Oh, two dozen. Oh, wow. Never mind. I thought I said two. Two. Holy Christ. He could have roofied all of Long Island. He could have roofied the entire country. All it takes is a drop of that shit. He could have made us all forget Tuesday. The whole world could have roofied Godzilla. Forget the last like. Could he make us all forget the last like six years? Because. Maybe that could be his community service. Uh, okay, look. Just everybody throw back a shot, and we're going to start fresh. The thing about the cops is, once you let them in, they're like vampires. Once you let them in, you're fucked. Yeah. Um, yeah. You can't let the cops I in. I don't even... So, I don't even, like, my doormat, I never get one that says, welcome. Mm-hmm. Because that, you know, if you're going by like Faye rules, <laughs> can be seen. Because I don't know if y'all know this, but like the Faye are the fucking power gamer min maxers of the metaphysical world. They're very, they're rules lawyers. Mm. And that can be an invitation. So you don't want to welcome Matt in front of your door because that's just going, hey, spooky shit, come on in and get me. Once the cops are inside, you can go, oh, you can't go, okay, I want you to investigate this, this stuff over here. But you can't look over there. You can't look over at that stuff. You're not allowed. I didn't call you here for that. You could only look at this. That's not how that works. Yeah, because once they're in, anything to give them probable cause, they can start fucking around. So if you're in, you invited them into your crime scene. Yeah. If you're doing crime, you don't get the police. They're not for you. You're not. A, that's that's something you don't get a part no. of. No. Because if you do, you're not doing crime anymore. You're doing time. Is that how that works? Just I the the idea that he could call the police 
because someone broke into his fucking drug lab. I, How do you dispose of two dozen 55-gallon Trum of Rufy? I don't know. There's got to be something you could use to neutralize it. Because, like, you can't pour it in the sewer. <laughs> Of a bunch of alligators who don't know what they are. <laughs> and listen, Long Island has a storied history <laughs> of shit in the ocean. Yeah. For for all of you who were born way too recently, in the 80s and 90s, we uh for a while we had a giant garbage barge just floating around Long Island because there was nowhere for all the trash to go. So we had a yacht of garbage <laughs> just floating around. Because no one would allow it for to For a while. Yeah. Right. For a while, completely separate of that, for like two whole summers, medical waste was just washing yep. up on all the beaches. I don't even remember if we ever figured out where it was coming from. <laughs> People are like, Tara, why don't you trust the ocean? Because it used to be full of syringes when I was a child. Well, that's a fun uh, segue into our next one. Oh, God. Oh, God, yes. So you remember last week we had the guy who tried to drive into the ocean? Yeah. And we couldn't figure out why he was doing it. He was just, like, driving in the fucking ocean because he could. Well, we've got another one who tried to go into the ocean. Wasn't driving, but um, we do know why. And it's stupid. Man allegedly flees police by swimming out to sea. <laughs> Man allegedly swam out to sea in a futile bid to avoid being arrested. Police say the incident unfolded about 6.50 p.m. after a vehicle was spotted driving in a dangerous manner along Marine Parkway in Auckland's Oriwa. I think I said that right. Um, or is it Oriwa? Nah. Officer signaled for the driver to stop, but he fled at speed. Units quickly abandoned the pursuit, while another nearby patrol unit observed the vehicle as it drove onto the beach. The driver then got out of his car and run into the water, swimming quite a distance offshore. Crew and the police... I mean... Hmm? I mean <laughs> at, as attempts go... But, but no, though. Crew and the police eagle helicopter kept an eye on the driver mm. while officers hopped into a boat. Mm. Two club members. You can't stay out there forever is the problem. Yeah, it's like, where are you going to go? Yeah. You're in New Zealand. Like, Australia is yeah. a really long way that way. I don't like your chances. Yeah. 36 but, year old. You know, props for creativity. <laughs> Just the fuck were you going? Like, and, and keep it. Uh, family to stop, driving while disqualified, and reckless driving. So, those aren't great, but. Yeah. That's like. A ticket, a fine, you're in court. It might be really expensive. It might suck. But now you've added resisting and attempting to get away yeah. from the cops. See, that's but Wouldn't bigger. this be a great time to find out that you're Aquaman? <laughs> wouldn't that be the best day ever? <laughs> That's random. Okay. <laughs> I think. If I, mean, the, I don't think they have jurisdiction over Atlantis. I think if the dude's suddenly talking to fish, he has bigger problems than trying to get away from the cops. Yeah. Yeah. Where the hell do you think you were going? There is nothing out there. To Gray help Havens. You. It is New Zealand. Yeah. Into the West. <laughs> <laughs> Annie Lennox in out there, man. She's not going to help you. Uh, we're moving back along to America. Arizona. I 
can't even I with this one, I can't even. Like I I I have never ever been arrested or incarcerated. But I imagine getting out is kind of well shit. Cause you know, you've got like now what? You, someone's gotta pick you up. You gotta figure out where you're gonna stay. You ain't got a job no more. Shit. You'd also think at that point, I'm not in jail anymore. I'd like to stay not in jail. And you'd be a little low key. Or the very first fucking thing you can do is steal an 18 wheeler full of Corvettes. Not just a Corvette. Corvettes, plural. Ted. But a truck hauling the Corvettes. A truck's hauling. The Corvettes. You have all the Corvettes. Okay. A man who stole a semi truck hauling over one million dollars worth of new Corvettes from an Arizona truck stop told deputies he only took the truck because he needed a ride home after being released from prison. Dude. Isaiah Walker, 23, of Lawton, Oklahoma. Salted and robbed a truck driver at the Love's truck stop. Walker was talking to the victim about his truckload and lulled him into a sense of security before grabbing the victim, throwing him from his cab. Walker allegedly drove away in the semi, which was transporting 10 Chevrolet C8 Corvettes with an estimated value of $1.25 million. Deputy spotted the stolen truck and attempted to pull the vehicle over. But officials said the driver refused to stop. The driver sped away recklessly, forcing other vehicles to leave the roadway. He was eventually stopped, and Walker was taken into custody. Now, he doesn't even have, like, the excuse, like, you've never heard of Uber. Like, you're 60 years old getting out of jail, and you've never heard of yeah. Uber. No, no, you're 23. You know what the fuck Uber is. Well, I mean, depending on how long he was in prison, does he have a phone? Does he have a bank account? Does, you know. Is Uber going to pick up at the prison? Because I wouldn't. Mm. But this is not the answer. Multiple fel felony Also, charges. what was your plan? Like, were you just going to drive home and keep that truck full of Corvettes? I just, you just leave That's it. That's going to be conspicuous. Well, you just leave it on the street and somebody will come along for it later. You know? If yeah. You, I mean, Tara, if you park a stolen vehicle in a no parking area, it takes care of itself. It was just a good toad. It's, it's like, could you not have found something a little less conspicuous to steal? <laughs> was there not a Honda Civic nearby? <laughs> Even a fucking bicycle or some shit. Come on. Because God damn. <laughs> just you stole all the Corvettes. Just a whole fucking bunch of them. And someone in the chat pointed out, the irony is his name is Walker. <laughs> I mean, it would have sucked, but it's free. Ain't nobody, yeah. no, yo, I'm not saying ain't nobody going to arrest you for walking, but no, they I mean, will arrest you for walking. I don't know how far he had to go and what the weather was like, so that might not have been feasible. No. But I got to think there's better plans than this. This is 1.5, 1.25 million. Yeah. You're going right back to jail, bro. Like, directly for more longer. That's not yeah. good language but for more longer for, for long <laughs> you you go bye bye all right now this yeah. this last one i this is horrible and hor horrific and it's terrible that someone has to deal with this and i shouldn't laugh i should not laugh but bro it, i think you got it but at the same Sorry, time, he's just like at the same time. This is magic. This, Good job, buddy. This is uh, this, oh god. 
kilt clad man seen sticking antiques in his rectum and then placing them back on shelves. A 60 year old kilt wearing man in Texas was arrested last week after he was caught on surveillance footage from an antique shop allegedly grabbing several items off the shelf and placing them. They have a picture of him with his hand up his butt. Yep. Yep. My Mitchell C. Vest was taken into custody on one count of criminal mischief and conviction with connected with bizarre okay. <laughs> According to a news release, February 15th, Harris County Constable received calls from multiple concerned citizens regarding an adult male they said was observed selecting items from multiple vendors at an antique mall outlet and placing the selected items in his rectum. I wonder what's inside your butthole. <laughs> But like he wasn't trying to steal them. Nope. It just whoop. And then, hmm, was he trying them on? <laughs> if it itches that bad, they make a cream. Long crime identified some of the items allegedly tainted by Vess Action's actions as a makeup brush, a restoration hardware piece an antique bottle opener, and a tobacco tent can. I don't know what that is. but What is that? It doesn't go in your butt. No. And since allegedly cleared at two different shops on the afternoon of February 10th, per the affidavit, the owner of the antique gallery told deputies she witnessed Vest pick up the makeup brush and hardware piece, shove both items up his anus, and then return the items to the shelf. Like this was, I don't, this was absolutely premeditated to the point he's wearing a kilt, right? Yeah. And correctly, apparently. <laughs> he's regimental as they, they, they would say. <laughs> Very handsome. What like, the fuck? But why return You want to say hi to the internet? Yeah. Is this like, like what? Is this like Goldilocks and the Three Tiltos? I don't like the kids chain, but what the hard. fuck fetish is this? This, hey, one's too, this one's too long. Say hi, internet. <laughs> He's purring. <laughs> hi, you gonna sit, stay on your keyboard? Like you have your this, own keyboard for this very purpose. Like this is a normal thing to do on a Sunday out. Yeah, you know, just walk around sticking stuff up your butt. Antique Roadshow got weird. So how long have you had this piece in your asshole? Antique Roadshow as hosted by Christopher Walken's character from Pulp Fiction. <laughs> I had this uncomfortable makeup brush. Up my ass. That's gonna go on someone's face, bro. <laughs> That's not okay. No, it's not. That's the horrible part. Someone has to deal with this. I understand that. Yeah. But on the other hand, it's just and listen, like anyone who works retail knows, like we had a biohazard kit in every retail store I ever worked in case some kid throws up. In case somebody fucking pees, because that happens. I had people pee in the dressing rooms at the Old Navy. Yeah, like someone point. I forget it was on like uh, it was on Blue Sky a while back. Someone pointed out that every single thing that comes out of you is a biohazard. Everything. Yes. yes. Everything. Hi, hi. I'm doing a thing right now. I'm 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 live on the interwebs. Thank you. I love you. You're a good boy. It's, it's just, it. How do you react to that in real time? It's just like, is he's not. How do you approach? What's your recovery statement? Did you ever have to do the recovery statement? No. Because you're not allowed to accuse shoplifters of shoplifting because then they might not shop with you anymore. 
So if you haven't worked retail, what you have to do is be really fucking passive aggressive, right? So you see them put a t-shirt in their bag and you have to approach and say like, hey, can I show you to go with that t-shirt? And like, luckily I was raised Irish Catholic, so I'm great at being passive aggressive. But you know, what's the recovery statement here? <laughs> Why do you ask them? Hi, so- What do you uh... even- so can I get you um a therapist? I, can I get you a therapist to go with the makeup brush in your ass? Would you like me to show you how to use that? Because you're not doing it right. 60 years old. Like, is this what he dreamed his whole long life of retiring to do? I'm gonna move out to air, I'm gonna, I'm gonna move out to Texas. I'm going to buy me a kilt and I'm going to spend my days shoving antiques up my ass. It's the American dream. Shine on, you crazy diamond. <laughs> it is fucking Texas, so I, is this even against the... <laughs> Texas. It's like a magic trick. Not really. Yeah, you know, it's like ever like they do. They they like, what's the story of this piece? Well, from now on, forever until the end of time. Well, this was pat in my family for uh, thirty years, and that was passed down to uh, my nieces. And then some guy grabbed it, shoved it up his ass. It was worth an awful lot of money. Until <laughs> the ass incident. <laughs> oh, so that, um, that, uh, <laughs> that was, what have we learned this week? <laughs> well, we've learned retail is a lot harder than you ever thought possible. Just when you think you have a firm grasp on it. Someone will shove antiques up their butt. Yeah, I think we've learned shop with gloves on. <laughs> God. Um, I don't know if your mom ever yelled at you not to, like, touch stuff at the mall. Mm. Like, we weren't even allowed to hold the handrail on the escalator because germs. Who knew? We've learned if you're just out of prison and looking for a ride, the semi truck with all of the Corvettes are not a good choice. Subtle. Go oh, subtle. Right. Yeah. We've learned you can't escape the police by just swimming out into the sea. But wouldn't it be cool if you could? <laughs> that would be cool. Would you just give up? And be like, you know what? Me and the dolphins, we're, we're taking it from here. Fuck it. <laughs> and so, it's the waters off Australia. So it's amazing you even survived. That's true. We've learned that if your place of business is also a place of crime, do not call the cops. Ever. Yeah. Ever. No. You idiot. We've learned that. If you are an undertaker and you want to advertise, softly, softly, you got to be gentle with like, that shit. You almost need to hire like a social worker to do your marketing. Because otherwise you're just going to be, oh, that's the prick. I remember them. Oh, that fucking asshole. Yeah, they're not coming anywhere near us. And finally, we've learned. If you want to get back with your ex, well, first of all, don't. And second of all, don't do it by stealing some dead, some woman's dead husband's statues. What, what the fuck? I tell you, if, if somebody stole something that Dan had gifted me for like, for any reason but for that stupid a reason i would develop laser vision spontaneously 
Like we, we have all of these dumb movies that teach guys you, you do this crazy, insane shit. Like, say anything. Yeah. You don't have to, like, listen to her or treat her like a human. No. Just, you know, once every couple of years, do some big, ridiculous shit, and you'll be fine. Yeah. You're not John Cusack. 